Hi, this is Tall Paul at the 15th birthday here at the Ministry of Sound, and you're watching Loop TV. You were 18 when you started at Terminals, and that was and that was for trade. And of course, that, back in those days, it was there was more sort of a pop thing going on that you were doing. And now you're very much one of the people who's stayed with house music right the way through. Yeah, trade was. Uh, I used to, you know I used to love it. I, I mean, I can remember going down there on a Sunday morning to listen to the music. And I'd see my friends standing outside the pub, and they'd be going to their football matches and and stuff. But it was uh, for, for for me, it was it was different. The atmosphere was uh, was was something I don't think I've ever seen. You know, since it was it was that early era for me. It was just such a, a revelation, and um, the, mu the music was great. The atmosphere was fantastic, and I was into that stuff. We were doing pirate radio stations at the time. And you know, the tastes were, were sort of crossing, crossing over where, where I was getting caught. I, the, the DJing north of the border, if you like, past Watford, it was all a lot of vocal house and what you might call head candy type stuff, you know, this day and age. But I, I was always into a bit more of the tougher stuff, and that's where the whole trade thing. But that was the problem with our Fridays, because trade was being established as a great, um, fashionable, late night, you know, sort of uh, a venue. But Fridays, it would never, you know, it, 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 we just couldn't get it off the ground, and we tried lots of stuff. And uh, in the end, we said, "Well, why don't we try it ourselves?" And a sort of self-promotion, because we tried it and uh, nearly failed. But six months in, it was like it wasn't happening. And then it, it suddenly clicked, and we got through the Christmas, and, and off we went. Yeah. It's been a hell of a ride, really. I mean, your Thanks first a lot of years there. Isn't it? So we have, haven't we? You've released your first record. It's 18 years ago now. Right, God, you make me feel really old, all these references to 18 years. And so it's all right. I, I was there too. <laughs> You're responsible for some of my misspent youth. Lots of dreams that, uh, yeah, you, you set out to do, and um, one by one, you know, you, you were achieving those, and it was, yeah, it, it was a great and a very special time, making music, being around music, pe uh, hearing your stuff on the radio, on Tongi show, or hearing people play your music in, in your own environment, your own club. You know, it was just, yeah, stop here. This'll do me. <laughs> but you're not going to stop here, are you? You won't really, so well, what's next? I think it'll always, it'll always be in your blood. Um, I, I, I still enjoy playing music. I love listening to music and, and tracking it down and, and it's being sent all the promos and listening to all the new stuff. Uh, I think I'll be doing that, yeah, for, for a long time more. DJing-wise, you know, it, it, it's... it's um, it, it's sort of come full circle for me in, in that fact that when it started it was a hobby and it was fun and it, I didn't have to do it for any other reason for just because I love to do it. And then, what was your day job when you first started DJing? I used to work at a work at club. I was working at Terminals as, a, as, as anything that needed to be done. Cleaning the pots, doing the tills, doing, get, finding the receipts. So literally the banking, from the ground up? Completely, absolutely, yeah. Even to the toilet management, the whole works from the very uh, hardcore upwards. You're here tonight, and a lot of the DJs who are playing here tonight are the old school DJs, the, yeah, the boys who were there right, right from the, right. the beginning. Yeah. How does that feel? I think it was an achievement for Danny and, and the crew, my brother, to get you know, to get the lineup back, you know, for our first birthday, and uh, severe talent from this country that have uh, gone on to do some amazing things, and uh, but still will come back to you know, the places that, that, that uh, they used to enjoy, and we used to enjoy having them down here, and, uh, you know, we see Danny, Danny Rampney be out on the dance floor half the night, you know, and um, it, and, it, and it was great, I and mean, that's what we, we like to have that vibe, you know, we, we, wanted, we wanted people to come down and make sure that uh, they had a good time, they wanted to come back. One of the things that you must have from doing the sort of turn mills in the early days and all the way through is a really nice sort of set of memories that would take you know, <laughs> a million years for somebody else to create. Yeah. You've achieved an incredible lot in a fairly short space of time, relatively speaking. Really the club, you know, because um, I, I found some old photographs of what it looked like before 
the whole dance thing happened. You know, it was it was a it was a, a lunchtime jazz sort of serving food with carpets and uh, you know a, a huge wine rack and a 50 odd wine list. You know, so there's there's almost a history before that part of it. So Turnmills comes in sort of three three parts of my life, and um, yeah, Danny and I were, were there from from the very beginning and to the very end. 22 years. Jesus. <laughs> making me feel old. <laughs> God almighty, yeah. Oh, thank you now before I can do as we start the ageing process anymore. Have yeah, a fantastic sure. night. We hope to see you at SW4. Yeah, absolutely. And, mate, keep up the good work. I will. Thank you very much. Catwood Tour Paul, Loop TV.